Steelers, uh, you know, kind of updates, discussion, like what's going on with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going into the draft here uh, next Thursday, so basically a week from when this episode releases. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and talk. I'm going to give you on the spot. We didn't prepare this. I literally just wrote it down. You saw me writing. You saw me writing. writing. They saw me writing. Yes, I saw did. me writing. Everybody saw me writing. Um, I, four positions, and we're going to rank. I want you to rank them in the order of priority with the first round pick. Okay. So what is your priority with the first round pick? Because, you know, depending on who goes, you know, before you, who trades up all this, right. um, your draft board could, could change a little bit. Um, okay. Center. Wide receiver, offensive tackle, cornerback. One through four. I think the first thing you need to address is the center. Okay. I think center's number one. I would agree. I think then you move to... You go center, offensive tackle, wide receiver, corner. Oh, see, like, I, I would... So we, we agree on the on the start. I could not agree more. Or I could not agree less on the rest of it. I would go center. I think DB is absolutely number two. I think you need to find somebody that can freaking cover somebody on the back end. If I have to watch somebody that plays similar to Patrick Peterson again next year, I'm going to pull my freaking hair out. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. I can't do you, it. You got Dante Jackson. No, I absolutely. He's a good slot. If he plays out wide, I'm going to I'm gonna punch somebody in the head. Um, so I'll go center number one. I got to go DB two. I have to do it. And here's the thing. This is what bothers me about Pittsburgh is that they have had horrific defensive back play out safety aside. So I guess horrific cornerback play for every single season I can ever remember in my life, yet dedicate almost nothing to it. Almost no Ryan Mundy, give me a freaking break. Yeah. Ryan Mundy, come on. Come on. Patrick Peterson, really? He's a geriatric. Like, you can't tell me that's a real solution. Finally, they put some sort of capital in it with the 32nd overall pick last year, which was technically a second-round pick, uh, with Joey Porter Jr. Thank God, right? But I'm so sick and tired of hearing the complaining about never having a good secondary and then never doing anything legitimate about it. Like, for example, Cooper DeGene's probably going to be there in the first round. I would 100% be down if they took Cooper DeGene in the first round. If JPJ is gone. The, the uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. Mm -hmm. The new the new era, JPJ. So I would go center number one. I'd go DB two. I would absolutely go with uh, offensive tackle three. I'd go wide receiver four. I would go offensive tackle three and wide out four because if I have to see Dan Moore Jr. try to play left tackle again, I'm also going to pull some pull my hair out and punch somebody in the head with it. I think that's fair, but I think receiver has to be a very stressed, important issue. To Absolutely, address. but like you said, I think there's so much value in the second, third, fourth, fifth rounds, and the Steelers have shown the propensity to be able to draft wide receivers well. Antonio Brown late round. Uh, you know, Heinz Ward wasn't the high, most highly touted player. Deontay, Deontay, Johnson. Deontay Johnson late. George Pickens was a second rounder. Like, they've shown the ability to draft and develop receivers really well. Yes. I've always said it's like if you consistently draft receivers well or any Juju. position well later in the rounds, why would you not stick to the formula that's worked for you? Yeah. Like, clearly DB's a problem. Go get the most talented DB. Clearly center has been an issue outside of Marquise Pouncey. Go address it early. Like, I, I think... If you're good at late round stuff, stick with that. I just think center. Center's number one. Center, you have to absolutely you have to go get that now. You then said what? Wide receiver, then tackle, then DB. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I don't know. Okay. Well, then, I mean, either so, way, you're still getting what you need. It's just different order of work. Okay. Now, one one more question. I know we're we're running late on time, but uh, if you had to, okay, let's let's phrase it this way. Let's start with question number one. Do you think Ross starts the entirety of the season? And if not, what week do you think Justin Fields takes over? No, in week seven. Wow, that's a lot earlier than I thought. Wow. See, and I think this depends on, we'll, we'll have to reevaluate this when we get the schedule. Um, I'll go a little bit later. I think it's going to be week 11. Come. And then I think he's going to be really bad and we're going to go back to Ross. You think? In week 16. What do you think? Okay. Okay, so that's right now. Give I me a season play by play. We start with Russ. Okay, how does it look? Week one, not bad. Yeah, I don't think he'll be fine. I think Russ will be fine. Um, 
you know, so what I have him, I have Justin Fields starting week 11 or just let's say the 11th game. And let's say they've played 10 games already. Uh, I think they will be six and four. I think Russ will be slightly above average. So we'll say averaging 210 yards a game. You know, he'll have in 10 games, 14 touchdowns, seven picks, two to one passer rating in the high, high eighties, low nineties, good enough. But I think you're going to see the last couple games of that 10 game stretch. He's going to be worse. I think those stats are going to be front loaded of okay. those 10 games. Okay. And then I think fields will come in, look good. First game, look decent. Second game, bad, bad, bad. Russ will take back over. Okay. And then from there, I know this is like I think they'll long miss the shot predictions. No, no, no. But then what do you do with Justin Fields if you see that? If he doesn't really show you much promise and you take the starting job away from him towards the end of the season, what does that say next year? You see year? if he wants to sign for a low and if not, say bye. And go draft someone. Yeah. Because you're not going to hang with Russ for too much longer. No. You're, and, Russ and, is a one to two year solution. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. He's a bridge guy. Russ yes. is a bridge guy. Yes, and if the bridge is the Justin Fields, then that's fine. But if he comes in and plays like garbage, well, then it's a bridge of somebody else. Well, and I think at least the Steelers have shown signs that they're not completely stuck in their ways. To it's about the Steeler way of pride and tradition because they got rid of Kenny. And I was just about to say, can we applaud Kenny Pickett? He did the most important thing in Pittsburgh sports history. He broke the he broke the he stigma. He sucked so freaking bad. But we got him out. We that they said, we're going to change how we've done business for, what, 78 years now? Uh, he was that bad that they said, you know what, we got to completely flip this on his head <laughs> and uh, and move off a first-round pick quicker than we've ever had. So, Kenny, we, we applaud your effort, um, even though you were uh, not a very good professional quarterback. So, uh, thank you for that. Much appreciated. And your legacy will live on in, in Steelers legend uh, for, if not anything, that. Yeah, uh, go have fun in Philly, you freaking Jaguar. Ooh, Jaguar, fighting words, guys.